it's a really lovely evening so I thought I'd walk around the veggie garden with you. Um, probably since you last saw the video I have put some um, new wood chip on the paths so that's super nice to walk on and then I've got obviously two beds which you've seen before but for those of you that haven't uh, two long beds they're about five six meters long actually it's probably a bit longer than that probably about seven or eight meters long and then they're about a metre wide and then I've got a skinny one here. Now I live in Sussex. This is a big hedge that I live alongside and also I'm under this really beautiful oak tree. Beautiful as it is, it takes all the moisture. So although we've had so much, so much rain, um, I'm having to water. So every couple of days I'm going around with a hose pipe and watering all these little individual plants um, at the roots. There's no point in putting a sprinkler on, it really doesn't get anywhere. but it's a bit of a labour of love and I've just got home from work and spent the last what, hour and 15 minutes doing this. So um, yeah, it's quite, it's nice for the, the mind. I've been busy at work and it is lovely um, just zoning out a bit, but boy, does it take a lot of your evening. Um, so this bed here, um, they've all, all this stuff was sown um, in modules and then planted out a sort of, I would say, I think it was about March I planted everything out and um, everything was under fleece so the fleece is now off there is some netting on the cabbages and the um, newly planted spinach at the back over there that you can see and that's really just to keep the pigeons off um, i try not to net my stuff too much because of the birds and also i don't really have too much of an issue with um, insects and if i do the main ones are the cabbage white butterflies which i spray with a particular spray called Bacillus uh, thuringiensis and that's three times a year and it's a biological control so it doesn't harm anything else. Um, right so back to this, this is kind of my salad bed and the reason I make this a salad bed is because it's shaded um, in the morning and in the evenings and during the day it gets the sun in the middle of the day but it's quite good for lettuces because they don't like to have too much sun um, all the time. So a little bit of rocket, this is um, overgrown but um, still quite tasty to pick some leaves up. It's now gone to flower probably because I've let it dry out. It's actually in a pot and then that just sits on the ground. I've got some parsley seedlings here. This is cos lettuce um, called Lobjots. I grow it every year, really easy to grow and um, gives you these really lovely crunchy leaves. This one is called, this lettuce is Marvel of Four Seasons. Now they are starting to heart up because I haven't been quick enough in um, harvesting the outside leaves. So you can see that's a lovely big heart there. Um, if you harvest the outside leaves, oh, there is a slug, excuse me. Now, what I'm doing with my slugs is putting them in a, um, a, a glass jar, and then I take them in the car to work and release them. So I kind of feel that I'm not killing anything, but they're well away. Um, they have quite a good homing instinct, would you believe? So. Um, get out of my garden basically and take yourself to another part of Sussex. Right, so um, yeah, these are different types of lettuces. So this one is Marvel of Four Seasons. Um, this one I think is Lola Rosso. I'm terrible. You know, I, I put these things out with labels and then the labels get lost and then I can't remember what things are. Um, more spinach. This is a really lovely spinach called Medania. Um, I grow it beginning of the year and at the end of the year, not through the summer because it tends to bolt too much. You can see actually one has already bolted there. And then up this line, there's a severely massacred sorrel that just gets too big for its own boots. That's a perennial that comes back every year. And then um, some more planted spinach, which you can see the difference here, much smaller. And that will be obviously harvested before the hot summer. And then I've got celery, which is just there. Celery really likes it here, grows really well, I grow it at the same spot every year. And up the back there's some rhubarb and the forcer obviously. I've taken the forcer off now and the rhubarb tends to sprawl everywhere and then I don't eat too much of it so I kind of let it do its thing. I've got this lovely little, um, I've just wiped slug stuff on my face. <laughs> um, I've got this lovely little um, stone pond here. Now it's just filled with water that comes from the water butt but it's really lovely when you see the birds um, you know all washing in there that's really cute just a little bit of water is amazing how much you um, encourage bird life to the garden. 
then this little patch here is really a very, very dry patch. At the beginning of the year, this is all self-seeded limnanthes, which is the poached egg plant. You can see it's just coming into flower now. Absolutely a topper for hover flies. They really adore it and so do the, the bees. So that's perfect. And then you can just see in the middle there some borage. Now this um, structure is really to grow some cucumbers up. This, these limnanthes will die back and then I'll plant some cucumbers and they'll use that as a support. I can see I'm watering there. And then the middle bed, I'll just walk you through both of them. The middle bed on the left, so I've got brassicas, some Brussels sprouts, some cabbages and some cauliflowers. Um, it's amazing how much this uh, netting does protect them from being attacked by some pigeons that have decided they want to make my garden their, their home. Again, I've never had pigeon trouble before. This year, pigeons. Um, and then I've got some, yeah, some cauliflowers, some kohlrabi. Next is fennel, which is there. Then I've got some beetroot, some spring onions and some uh, white onions. That's all I grow, the uh, rest of the onions. I grow another patch up the road. And then right at the back over there, excuse my blurred finger, right at the back over there is some, um, actually I'm gonna show you though, some um, coriander, a little bit of self-sown borage, and some um, broad beans. Now these are really pretty. These are called crimson flowered. They're a heritage variety. And I tend to grow these ones every year. And then this is a new one, which I think is called Masterpiece Long Pod. That had some really beautiful lilac flowers and now they are slightly changing to white. But it's such a stunning colour when you look at that in the garden. Yeah, such a pretty, pretty flower. And at this time of year, I think, before everything starts drying out in, in midsummer, is my favourite time. All the greens are like vibrant. It's amazing. Um, Self-sown oregano or marjoram. I think it's just, um, just wild oregano, but it, it is absolutely wonderful for the bees so I, this just grows as a mound comes back every year and then we cut it down a couple of times and it um just comes back and flowers again so it's a it's a really lovely one to keep on the patch so i try and grow as many flowers as i can within the veggies just to encourage a, a kind of a garden full of wildlife and insects and things um garlic so this is now fattening up a bit which is nice Lovely chunky garlic, it's all homegrown, so I don't know what variety it is now because the cloves are all mixed up. Who knows? Um, and some red onions here. Now these were planted really late, they were from sets. Um, they're quite tiny, but I'm hoping they will get going um, a little bit later on there. Yeah, they're not, they're not growing as well as I thought, but maybe that's just because I planted them late, perhaps. Um, fine example of some things that have gone to seed. This is pak choy. I grow a lot of pak choy and I just thought I'd grow some earlier in the year and shove it out in the garden. Uh, we had a couple of hot days and bloody things have just grown and bolted and gone to flower. Uh, so, so I'm going to leave them. Um, for the moment this space will have some courgettes in a little bit later but I might as well leave them for the bees and the insects and then I'll chuck them on the compost. I've got a couple of courgettes that I put in the ground really early. There's one, and then there's one here. Now you can see, this is very sad. Um, slugs have attacked this one. Now these were planted under fleece, and I think, to be honest, I'm just gonna leave them there. I'll, I've got some courgettes growing in the cold frame that are a lot bigger, obviously, they've been protected. And um, I'll, stick them in this space here so I'm not too worried about these early ones but there's no fleece on them now so we'll see how they go being early and then this limnanthes here the poached egg plant that you saw earlier up at the back um, has all self-seeded here and oh, I, I just love it so I've, I've left it it's taking up a quite a bit of space in the veggie patch but it'll die back and then I can plant something else there but it's so cute I mean look at it such a beautiful flower absolutely lovely I'm trying to get that in focus and it really is refusing there we go it's so pretty it's got all those like little stamens in the middle of that yellow cup so pretty um 
I've planted some chard. Now, I love chard, but for some reason it doesn't really like me and I'm not that successful with it. So I'm going to try it in a few places in the garden. Um, it's over by the spinach, um, over by the spinach that we saw earlier. And then I've got some here. It's been a little bit swamped by this limnanthus, so I'm hoping that it will be okay. It just doesn't seem to, I don't know what it is. I do get, I do get some, but just, I want a lot of it, you know what I mean? And um, I just don't seem to to get a lot. Um, peas up my homemade wigwam. You would have seen me made this. It's from some um, birch sticks and some hazel sticks. So this is mange to this side and on the other side is um, peas. Some more lettuce. So this one was I can't remember what this one is called, Lolo Rosso, I think. Frilly, red, really lovely leaf. Um, these ones were sown mid-March, so you can see how far back they were compared to the other ones that were sown, um, though they were planted out in March, so these ones were sown, so they're kind of a month behind. But that's quite nice, bit of successional leaf. Um, I try and, you know, do things in batches so that you get food all year round. I've got a cold frame here that I think before was full of dahlias. I'm just going to show you, lift up that if I bend down. Now these tomatoes are all in pots. There's several different varieties. Most of them are bush ones because they are for growing outside. Now normally I grow um, my tomatoes in the greenhouse, which we'll have a look at in a minute. But this year I want to try some outside. So I keep them in pots and then I can move them out when the weather's a bit warmer. Um, you can see Hopefully, Ooh. there you go. Some are making flowers, but yeah, they're hiding in the cold frame at the moment. Um, I lift this up during the day and completely open it up, but at night time it kind of shuts down onto these little um, stumps just to keep a bit of airflow going. And to be honest, I think I've probably already snapped the leaf there. Yeah, see, look, I've actually broken that stem of flowers there with the root, with the lid. So that's a lesson learned to not be so stupid and to be careful of the lid. That's just ruined a whole load of flowers. I'm actually quite cross about that. Right, I'll leave that lid open for a minute. And then over here, another little rack, just things growing. I've got some chard, try and grow some more. And then these are brassicas, all sown in April. So I've got some purple sprouting broccoli, Brussels, and some purple, yes, two purple sprouting broccolis, one called claret and one called early. Um, I think it's called early green, but uh, they obviously won't be harvested till next year, but they are getting their grow on at the minute. And then just starting to come up here is Romanesco. Some really nice, that lovely pointed kind of cauliflower. Um, well, this is interesting. So these are my beans. Now, I always sow my beans like this. I sell a lot of them out the front of the house and I also grow a lot of them. Now these were sown um, on the 5th of May and it's now the, what is the date today? Uh, I think it's about the 16th of May off the top of my head. So it's taken that long to get this high and I germinate them all in a big pot. Oh, that's really heavy. Um, yeah, I germinate them all in a big pot. So you can see how many we've got here. There's probably about 30, I would say. Uh, probably in a week, maybe this weekend, depending on, yeah, probably this weekend actually. They feel quite sturdy and they've got a couple of leaves up. I will tip this pot out separate them all out and grow them on individually in pots and then they'll be either put in the ground a bit later or sold on the front on my plant stall that I have. So same goes for these. These are a different type. I think these ones are called red swan. Yep, red swan off the top of my head and they're a little dwarf bean and then I've got some runners here and these ones are called scarlet emperor. Um, I just find for germinating it's a really quick and easy way to germinate a lot in a very small space 
Um, I do obviously have to separate them out, but then I can pick the strongest ones and I've got a little bit more control over slugs. They're just kind of protected. So yeah, they do really well that way. I've got calendula bits and pieces here. Um, some leeks that have been sown there and some more brassicas on that um, tray there. Now, you know, sometimes I grow them inside, but the weather's been actually quite mild and for germinating things like that, it's, um, the weather's been fine. The daytimes are actually quite warm at the moment. And then some lettuces here that are totally overgrown in pots, but um, I'm either gonna eat them or shove them out the front. Now, annoyingly, this pot here, uh, this pot, this um, uh, tray and the one below were both totally full of beautiful, very happy seedlings until yesterday when I knocked this whole stand off and tipped the whole lot on the floor. Um, actually really wound me up because these are poppies which are sometimes a little bit difficult to germinate and the whole tray was full of really happy seedlings. The ones I've saved are still okay, they still look alright but um, I lost almost half the tray and the same with this celery. Um, yeah, I just basically backfilled half of it and shoved them in, but the rest of the seedlings have suffered a bit, so that's really annoying. Um, here I've got dahlias. Now, I don't really know what to do with dahlias, to be honest. I, Yeah, I like them, or I've started to really like them. From last year, I grew a load and I love them. So I've ordered loads, shoved them in pots. They're doing this. They're big. Some of them are small. Some of them haven't done the thing, but um, yeah, they are ideally going to go in some big pots on the patio all together, just shoved in to make a big mass of dahlias later in the year. Hopefully that will work out. Under this is a truck. So it's one of those sort of raised truck things. My auntie gave it to me and it's actually very useful for the carrot bed. Um, excuse the non-weeding at the moment but the carrots do really well here. I keep the fleece over just to protect them from carrot root fly and to keep the um, wind off, but uh, it's quite a, a dry sort of, um, what's the word? I can't even think of the word. Uh, uh, the, the soil's quite sandy, there's a particular word for it, I can't think of it. And um, the carrots do really well. So that's those. And then over here is just a selection of things that I'm growing. So. It just sits under the oak tree so the pots don't get dried out too much. There's some dill, a whole load of new flowers growing, so that's cosmos and cerinth. Um, what else is there? Alyssum, cornflowers, just a whole second round of flowers that I'm going to sell out the front. Um, someone's put in a big order with me, so I'll be taking those to them at some point when they're a bit bigger. A few cucumbers and then a load of sunflowers and some cosmos. I've already planted out quite a lot of cosmos, so this lot is kind of for um, reserves or the plant stall that I've got or just whatever. Um, I always grow a lot more than I need because they do get annihilated by the slugs. Um, sunflowers, I kind of like the more interesting ones. These ones are black and red. Um, I've got some teddy bear sunflowers that's been given to me from somebody and um, yeah, they will go probably, they actually do very well, this is the beds from the back, they actually do very well in this patch, you know, where I showed you where the um, poached egg plant is, they actually do quite well once that's died down, so they'll probably go here and actually the structure for the cucumbers, they can just be supported by that, I'll tie them in. And lastly, it's going on a bit, sorry, um, excuse my washing. So lastly, into the greenhouse. I'll just do a quick swizz on this one. So the tomatoes, these are all planted with halos. You've seen me plant those out and also they're now supported. You can see that white string there, um, polyurethane string, so it doesn't rot. Um, I've learned that by experience because all my string rotted last year because it was just natural twine. Um, tied up to a piece of string at the top for supporting and it just gets wound around the plant as it grows and actually it's it's a really good way of um supporting plants so you know that they're quite loose but they don't flop over and you just kind of just twist the um string round 
just be careful because it's a flower there sometimes you need to undo the top of it and then restring it again so it isn't too taut if you bend the plant too much you are in danger of kind of like snapping the leaf and then along the front of my um, so basically I've got tomatoes each side I've got marigolds in the middle and I've got pots of chilies that are dotted in between um, the chilies I like in pots because I can put them outside as well and um, there's a little cucumber there that's the same thing so I've got plants so I've got alyssum which is like this unbelievably cute let me try and zoom in Ooh, hello yeah I mean look at that the cutest flower ever um, so that is dotted around here so this is alyssum and that will hopefully form some really cute pretty flowers at the front there so both sides are full of different types of um, tomatoes they're all cordon tomatoes and um, which means you have to pinch the stems out I haven't done that for a while but you can see this one has got two very big stems here so one of those will come out and just I'll keep one one growing and then what else have I got self-seeded nasturtium that's going absolutely mad if it gets too thick I'll have to pull it because it's going to get in the way of the tomatoes I would have thought but I'll try and keep it going if I can um yeah I mean it's looking super healthy it's very happy in here uh syrinth lovely that's self-seeded self-seeded here it's a pain in the neck that it's self-seeded right in the path but there we go um and then at the back I will probably I don't know it depends on how it goes but I'll probably move this table out depending on the stuff underneath how it how it grows I'm, I'm just well aware that I have covered them with quite a bit of shade there so um you can see in the corner there I've got peppers in this section here I'm growing all the sweet peppers I've got some spare tomatoes you can see here in the corner there for emergencies and um my friend Niall who's on Instagram who sells um seeds sent me this beautiful black beauty plant because I accidentally topped mine and um I was just worried about it growing so I've been given this one so I'm looking after it and hopefully that will be a good replacement for it a few onions and then lastly my aubergines so I just need to take the yellowing leaves off the bottom but they're all planted up in some lovely peat free compost these will stay in these huge pots and the idea is they can stay in the greenhouse when it's cold and take them out I'll take them out into the summer uh, into the summer I'll take them out when it's sunny through the summer into the garden along with those tomatoes that you saw um the garden is one that's kind of pretty pretty hot um in certain sections so those aubergines will absolutely love that and I normally just sit them in a water tray let them do their thing and they grew amazingly well last year so I'm really hoping for the same thing just on the other side of the greenhouse it's getting a bit jungly that's my kind of flower bed I've got all sorts of things so cornflowers alliums poppies um, I've got some aster clematis, uh, clematis? Uh, yeah clematis and a load of roses with cosmos in between so thank you for watching sorry it's just absolutely gone on and on but it was such a lovely evening i thought that i would um take the opportunity to show you around um excuse my washing but that's good night from me and the garden hope to see you soon it's been lovely isn't it it's so nice looking at the garden um at this time of year and you know now it's got warmer you can really see things are perking up so hope that's the same in your garden and let me know if you've got any questions I've mentioned before I do sell seeds on my website uh, which is www.queenofseed I also do subscriptions where I send you seeds at the right time to sow so if a lot of this confuses you as to what to sow when you don't have to worry about it I'll just send the seeds and you sow them um, anyway enjoy your evening and enjoy your garden